Welcome to the Brand Ambassador Series, Dave McNichol. And with uh, a single malt scotch that you don't really see everywhere, although I don't know why. I know, I don't know why either. But it's maybe a, because you just started. It's, uh, yeah, it's one of these whiskies that you find in obscure places and it's one of these whiskies that you know, traditionally may have sat dusting away, but it's got a great potential and I think a lot Thanks of Thanks a lot places. for being here, but <laughs> this is a big name. It is, it is. This is a big single malt scotch. It's the biggest selling whiskey in Italy. So? And so it's time that Manhattan, New York got yeah. to know this whiskey and be introduced to it. Find out a lot more about it because it's a fantastic and probably the easiest drinking single malt out there. For this episode of the Brand Ambassador Series, I believe we have to start tasting right from the beginning. Oh, I agree. <laughs> um, well, if, if there's the 10 and the 16, yeah. I guess we start with the 10. We start with the 10, yes. And a bit of history. A little bit of history, yep. Yeah. Great. So, the Glen Grant 10, and the whiskey comes from the north of Scotland, in the Speyside area. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm a particularly big fan of, of regionality, because you get whiskey from parts of the south, and tastes like those in the north, and Isla and Speyside. Mm -hmm. But from the Speyside area, which is an area that is pretty famous for its clean water, good source of barley, and producing flowery, lighter whiskies as a result. So Glen Grant was established in 1840 by the Grant family, and it was just another one of those whiskies sitting in the Speyside region. But in the 1870s, the owner, Major Grant, he decided to change the shape of the stills. At every distillery in Scotland, the shape of the still is different. Every single one of them. And it's the single most important factor that affects the flavour of a whisky. Mm -hmm. So, Glen Grant has very tall, very long, fluted stills. It lessens the copper contact, which means that the whisky or the spirit comes through lighter, and it works much better with the oak. So, the 10-year-old is probably, as I said, one of the easiest drinking single malts out there. It's a really good one for the ladies. A good starter malt, because it doesn't have all that fire and burn. It has that nice, easy-going uh, smoothness. Okay. So I think it's time we had one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> well then, I heard um, the Grand family. Mm -hmm. For those in, in the know of Scotch whiskey, uh, that could remind them of other whiskeys out there. It could. So let's clarify this. Uh, what about it? The, the name Grant is one of the most common uh, names in the space side area of Scotland. Mm -hmm. In fact, Lord Strathspey is the leader or the chief of the Grant family. So you do have this family who have been involved, not cousin to cousin or so on, but just because it's a common name, you find the name popping up in different mm -hmm. distilleries. So there are other distilleries, manufacturers, who have the name Grant. But this particular member of the Grant family decided to establish their own distillery in Rothis in 1840, and they're not related. And this is not part of a bigger Grant organization. It's very individual, and it's more to do with that this was a particular place where this particular family okay. uh, decided to Very establish good. a distillery. Today, um, who owns this, uh, this brand? This is now owned by the Grupo Campari. Right. So Campari USA, which is part of the, the bigger Campari family, which is based out of Milan in Italy. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it's one of the biggest selling whiskies in Italy. And as a result. Uh, Dave, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I think putting a, a region, putting a mm -hmm. style in a region is something very difficult nowadays to do. Yeah. I think one of the reasons... If you tell me, if you tell me this is Speyside, I, I, I could say, sure, yeah. But I could tell you it's a Highland. And you'd probably say, oh, I go with you there. Yeah. Because you get light whiskies from the Highlands. Mm -hmm. um, it, most of the people that moves into this would never suggest that it was an Isla malt. Uh, yet, there are malts from Isla which aren't smoky exactly. as well. So, there is a move away from it because at the end of the day, by classifying something just on geography alone, when you could have distilleries a couple of hundred miles apart, mm. or one side of a hill to the other, when it's how they malt the barley, when it's the shape of the stills the, mm -hmm. and the wood that they use in the barrel, has far more influence than whether it sits, you know, cheek by jowl to each other. So. No, it smells good, so let's taste yes. it. Yes, so, Slangeva. Slangeva. Very easy going. Easy. Now, when you take it in before you even drink it, is it, can you smell it through your nose? Obviously. 
But then smell it again through the nose with your mouth open. Very different set of aromas. And then your brain is ready for what yeah. you're about yeah, to receive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, everybody who drinks a whiskey is going to get something different out of it. You know, I could tell you that you get strawberries and raspberries and sultanas, and it's psychosomatic. You're going to get strawberries, raspberries, and sultanas. But everybody has their own different covenant with the whiskey that they drink. You can do all the whole, you know, look at the legs and see them falling down. Oh, that's a nice aged whiskey. And, but when you get to drink it, it's how it affects you. And how it affects you on a cold winter's day will not be the same as a warm summer's evening. I can tell you how it affects me if I have too, too much of it. But certainly, to mm. me, it remains uh, light, fruity, yep. there's honey, there's apple, there's the things that you may see in there I want. Um, and actually, one of the things you've just pulled out of there is apple. Mm -hmm. One of the, you know, you, ha you get the, this is what you should smell and taste out of it, and it's orchard fruits, mm. autumn fruits. And apple and pear is something that's supposed to come out of that with a nice nutty finish. A little bit of almonds, maybe, maybe a little bit of hazel. But if that's not what you get, that's not what you get. Exactly. For a ten-year-old, that's that's pretty lovely. It is. Uh, what's the average retail price? The retail here? for that, uh, if you were to go to an average liquor store, you would be looking at fifty to sixty dollars. That's far from being expensive. Absolutely, it's a very drinkable uh, single malt. This is this for is that a, price range. A go-to entry level. Yeah, I would say, and um, there are a number of whiskies out there which are go-to entry level, and. I guess my job is to take this from the obscurity of people not going to the shelf and picking mm -hmm, this one mm -hmm. to making it something which people really do have that sort of aha moment, that they've tasted something within the budget that is so light and so refreshing in a, in a whiskey that you, know, they, they, you build from that mm -hmm. into different styles and so on. You, you, you can't suddenly start your progress off of the smoky malt, because then everything else after that right. is going to be affected by that. Yeah, yeah. This is a nice whiskey yeah. to start, even just start the even off with. This is a nice lunch whiskey too. Nice lunch whiskey. Um, goes Do you well with ice in it as well? One, ma one man's meat's another man's poison. Personally, no, I would not, uh, because I don't think it needs it. Uh, you may wish to put a splash of water in. Again, personally, with this one, I probably wouldn't do that. I mean, there's no aggressivity there. No. There's nothing harsh to it, so yeah. why would you... You would end up numbing it, yeah. I think. I yeah. think you would... Uh, Scotch whiskies are, are delicate in a way that, say, bourbons are not. So a bourbon reacts well to having a big ice tube cube thrown in. Mm -hmm. Scotch whiskey doesn't react quite so well with doing that. It, it works better with just either a splash of water or as it comes. But, you know, for anybody who hasn't tried this and anybody who's interested in doing it, try it neat to start with. If it's not your cup of tea, Put a little bit of water in. Right, exactly. Just work with it because yeah. you know you'll, you'll. It's a learning curve. It's a learning don't process. Don't go automatically with with just a lot of water or just a lot of ice. This this might ruin yeah, it. Yeah, it will. You know, for you, and you may never come back to it and realize what you've missed out on. It's it's all part of the learning game. And there's well, there's worse things to try and learn about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, this is this is very nice. Yeah. Um, what do you do? when it comes to the barley itself? Uh, do, you, do you malt your own? Do you source it right around? Do you order it at, at five parts per million of phenols? What's, what's the specificity of the barley itself? The barley itself, a lot of it will be locally grown. Mm -hmm. um, but to be honest, the amount of barley that can physically be grown in the northeast of Scotland for the number of distilleries that are there is pretty hard to, mm -hmm. to, to go with. So a lot of them will be sourced in. There's no uh, peating going on in this process. Mm -hmm. there, they don't malt the barley on the floor as they would have done in days gone by. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, that's a, you know, to, to, be, to do that for the amount that you would require, you would need malting floors about 10 times the size of the Yankee mm -hmm. Stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, they don't do it. It's done in the mechanical process. In fact, Glen Grant was the very first distillery to use the drum system right. for, for malting the barley. Uh, there's, I'm sure the, the master distiller handpicks the grains that he's looking for. That's above my pay grade. But the, uh, it's certainly not peated. They're certainly not looking for uh, anything that will disturb 
the character going forward. It's just the traditional Speyside grains of the barley and mixing it with that water that is so cold and fresh coming off mm -hmm. the granite hills of the highlands. So.